and my apologies to the Chamber for the slight delay due to a technical problem. Okay, look, I stand before this House today fully aware of the sensitive and complex nature of the matter we're about to deal with. I'm also fully cognizant of the wide range of views that exist within this House and indeed throughout our country. So from the outset I want to make very clear this legislation is about saving lives, the life of the mother and her child wherever possible, and that this legislation upholds the constitutional equal right to life of the unborn. I believe it is a bill that is measured and provides for a robust framework around a very real legal vacuum that currently exists. The main purpose of the Protection of Life during Pregnancy Bill 2013 is to restate the general prohibition on abortion in Ireland. It does not confer any new substantive rights to a termination of pregnancy. 21 years ago, the Supreme Court legalised the termination of pregnancy in cases where the mother's life is at risk. A copy will be circulated as soon as possible. We did have a technical problem, I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. Yes, we should have called upon you, Deputy. <laughs> at the moment, nobody is able to tell you how many terminations have been carried out in Ireland since then. Nobody has accurate figures on the number of terminations that were performed in Ireland last year. Nobody knows whether one hospital is responsible for the lion's share of these procedures or whether a small number of doctors carry out a disproportionate number of terminations. It's not possible to inform the House whether or not uncertainty over our termination laws has been abused. Worse, we do not know if women's lives are put at risk from this lack of clarity. And equally disconcerting for me is the fact that I cannot assure the House with certainty that women have clarity regarding the medical interventions available to them to save their lives. Article 43.3 of the Constitution was inserted by the Eighth Amendment in 1983. The state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect, and as far as practicable, by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. The Supreme Court decided in 1992, in Attorney General versus X, that the Constitution permitted the termination of a pregnancy where there was a real and substantial risk to the life of a woman which could only be removed by terminating the pregnancy. It must be remembered that the X case decision did not bring about a change in the law on abortion in Ireland. In the X case, the Supreme Court set out the correct interpretation of the law as it has stood since the Eighth Amendment. The difficulty is that no statutory framework has ever been established to vindicate the equal right to life of the mother and her unborn. Sections 58 and 59 of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861, which in various ways provide for a broad offence of doing acts with the intention of procuring the miscarriage of a woman, whether the act be committed by the woman or not, is of course qualified by the X case. There is no legislative or regulatory framework which currently exists to determine whether a woman is entitled to a termination of pregnancy according to the X case test or not. This situation is dangerous, dangerous for women who may be denied treatment to which they are entitled when a real and substantial risk to their life exists. And dangerous for the unborn as there is no procedure whereby unscrupulous operators who wish to abuse the X case test can be checked. As a result of this uncertainty, the European Court of Human Rights in AB and C versus Ireland found that 
the Irish authorities failed to comply with their positive obligation to secure the third applicant effective respect for her private life by reasons of the absence of any implementing legislative or regulatory regime providing an accessible and effective procedure by which C could have established whether she qualified for a lawful abortion in Ireland in accordance with Article 43.3 of the Constitution. At no stage did the European Court of Human Rights require that the law should be altered or amended. The decision simply called for a legislative or regulatory regime to be established to allow a woman to ascertain whether she qualified under the X case test or not, and to provide for a review mechanism where a woman is refused treatment. The government decided that the most appropriate way to provide for this clarity was by legislation with regulations strictly within the parameters of Article 43.3 of the Constitution as interpreted by the Supreme Court. Legislation is required to amend the 1861 Act and provide for the general prohibition on abortion in Ireland in an effective way and to set out clearly the situations in which doctors are allowed to intervene to treat a pregnant woman where a real and substantial risk to her life exists. In short, as matters stand, there is no clarity around the issue of terminations of pregnancy in Ireland. This means that the chilling effect of the 1861 Act can cause uncertainty for doctors. But it also means that terminations of pregnancy can be performed under the Constitution as interpreted by the Supreme Court by any doctor, anywhere in Ireland, at any gestational age, if he or she believes that suicidal risk can only be averted by a termination of pregnancy. The Protection of Life in Pregnancy Bill corrects all of this. For the first time, there will be legal clarity that any terminations are only carried out where the risk to the woman's life has been fully assessed and certified by specialists. For the first time, information on these rare terminations will become publicly available. It will become crystal clear to all of us if certain hospitals or certain medical professionals are responsible for a disproportionate number of terminations. If this bill is abused, I will have the power to suspend it, and I will not be afraid to exercise that power. For the first time, medical professionals will be provided with clear guidelines detailing where and when a termination can take place to save a woman's life. Most importantly, Irish women can be assured that everything possible will be done to save their lives in Irish hospitals.